I was about to bite into it, but I just can't help taking another shot at these beautiful layers. Here we go. Hey guys, it's Mandy from Lady and Pups. I'm gonna show you today how to make my fail-proof, um, super flaky pastry dough. And we're gonna stuff it with Fuji apple puree and vanilla custard. So I know there are tons of recipes out there that's like fail-proof or, you know, like foolproof or the best or whatever. And believe me, I don't use the word fail-proof very lightly, but I have made this pastry dough in the summer when it was hot and the butter was melting or when it was cold in the winter, when the butter was not melting, and I've made it so many times. Every time it came out very perfect. First thing first, we're going to be making the um, apple puree, the Fuji apple puree and the vanilla custard first because those needs to be cold um, before you make the pastry. I'm using three Fuji apples. And these are regular, um, I would say, medium size. So what I do is, what I like to do is, every time I peel an apple, I rub it with a little bit of a lemon when I move on to the next so that it doesn't brown, okay? So I'm just gonna keep um, peeling these two apples here. This is actually inspired by um, an apple pie from a Japanese bakery. And I love how you know, it's not, don't expect this to be like an American apple pie taste, you know, with all those cinnamons and um, all that stuff. It's actually a really, really simple um, apple puree that is really just focusing on the fragrance of the Fuji apple. And then Fuji apple um, has a really good fragrance. Don't be um, super caught up about cutting them all in equal sizes doesn't matter okay they're gonna cook down and they're gonna get a sort of like roughly pureed so here I have all the apple apples diced okay and you can see they're um, you know quite large chunks so I have a lemon I'm just gonna squeeze the juice inside so I'm gonna start with a quarter cup of light brown sugar first and I like to add about like half tablespoons of dark fragrant honey and almost everything that is sweet I always do just a tiny tiny pinch of sea salt so here so simple right no spice no cinnamon no butter no nothing okay this is a celebration of the apple itself so now we're gonna um, cook this down I have it on um, about medium heat over here. And you can just really leave it um, to be cooked down. The apples heat up, um, it's going to, a lot of juices are gonna come out and you wanna reduce those um, juice or liquids so that you intensify um, the flavor of the apple. And now we're gonna do the, um, the custard. It's a vanilla custard and we're gonna, I have one cup of milk already in this pot and we are going to need three large egg yolks. I separate it with my hand. So only quarter cup of granulated sugar, white sugar because um, light brown sugar is gonna discolor the custard. And one thing I would really encourage you to do is use a real vanilla bean. I know they're expensive and all that but I really think it makes a big difference and one of the joy about eating vanilla custard is seeing all these um, black specks I split half vanilla beans and I'm just gonna add it to the milk just a small pinch of salt and then we're gonna need three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Whisk these together until there are no lumps left from the flour. I'm gonna do like, again, medium-low heat. And this is something that you do not 
do not want to walk away from, okay? You're going to keep stirring and stirring and stirring. It's now been a minute or two, and you can see that it starts to thicken, right? So once it starts to thicken, I like to take the pot a little bit away from the heat, just so I have more control. Usually I wait until like it's starting to bubble, okay? Like almost like simmering, but you don't want it to really simmer. As long as you see like a little bit of bubble coming out, it means like it's done, okay? So I've added two tablespoons of butter in the end. Um, this is off heat already. And I like to squeeze just a few drops of lemon. And then whisk, you're gonna whisk the butter until they've melted completely. Transfer that into a bowl. And then I'm just going to cover it with plastic wrap and when I do that, I make sure that the plastic wrap is touching the custard so that it doesn't form like a skin. Now, because I'm gonna try to pull everything together on the same day, I'm gonna put this in the freezer, okay? The apples are have been cooking, I don't know, for like 15 minutes or so. Um, so you know they're ready when they become a little bit translucent. So now, I'm going to be using an immersion blender. I'm gonna turn off the heat and all I'm gonna do is give it super short pulses. I don't actually want to create like a liquid puree. So you can see that they are, they're pureed, but still chunky kind of, sort of. Okay, so I let it reduce down just a little bit more, okay? So this is the consistency that you want. Then uh, same rules apply. I'm going to wrap it in plastic and in the freezer, along with the custard. Now, we're gonna make the actual, my actual fail-proof um, flaky pastry. Um, I already have flour and salt inside this bowl and I have it sitting on top of a scale. I like to use scale to measure these things so it's, it's just more precise. So I need 115 grams of water. Okay, so that's 115, okay? Away with the scale, and I'm just going to whisk it together first with a spoon. I mean, not a spoon, a fork. And in the beginning, it's going to feel quite dry, I would say. And then once it's become shaggy like this, um, I switch to my hand. Try not to knead it too much, okay? Like when you're trying to pick up all those scraps and flour because we don't actually want gluten or at least too much gluten in this dough. So once you have like cohesive dough like this, try to pick it up just a bit more. I give it um, just a little bit of a squeezing action in my hand, just to make sure that it all comes together. Again, I don't want to knead this dough, and that's it, okay? So what I do is I lightly flour this a little bit. I pat it down, pat it down into like a disc, just so it doesn't stick, but not too much flour. So, and then I'm gonna fold the parchment paper. So I fold it into like, you know, with the dough kind of trapped inside this parchment into like a rectangular shape. I'm gonna use the rolling pin to force the dough to conform to this rectangular shape. This is not crucial to the success of the recipe. This is only because I like the dough in a rectangle shape to begin with because it just makes rolling it out later on a lot easier and, and neat. Now I have the dough, you know, in a perfect rectangle. Now, I'm gonna rest the dough um, in the freezer for 15 minutes, okay? Lightly dust the surface. Take out your dough. You can see that it's not super smooth, 
okay? Don't worry about it, it's fine, okay? So now you have, have a piece of A4 paper, eight by 11 inches. This is just for measurements, okay? So I don't have to use a ruler, so I can just do this. And then I know how big that dough is. So I'm gonna roll out this dough to the size of eight by 11. Do your best to keep this as rectangular as you can. Okay, so I do, I do, the, you know, rolling this direction and I do this direction and then I, you know, I do like diagonal on all four corners just to make sure that the corners are, are there. Yeah, about. Okay, so now once you've rolled this out, I'm gonna get my butter. You actually want to cut with a, you know, a pastry cutter. You want to cut like a thin, thin piece of butter like this, okay? And then imagine this thing, cut it into, you know, um, thirds. So you want to cover it two thirds of, of the dough. And you can see that how unprecise um, this recipe is because I'm not even measuring my butter. I'm basically just cutting these little pieces, tiny pieces, and I'm layering it onto the dough. And some places have a thinner butter, some places have thicker butter. Listen, it doesn't matter, okay? I don't call it fail-proof for nothing. Now, the egg wash or bean egg. Um, you're gonna brush it along the margin that you left. And this is just so that the dough is gonna stick back together properly and that um, the butter is sealed in. You fold it over. You know, make sure that the corners are all nicely fitted. Give it a little smash so that, you know, not a lot of air is trapped inside. You know, give it a little cut and then you fold this last third over itself. And then you're gonna pinch the edges so that it's sealed properly. Now, flour. This is one fold. So this is the first fold and we're gonna do three of these. You're gonna roll it out exactly the same size as the first fold, so that's an A4 paper. Okay, about. So again, um, I'm not gonna use the egg wash anymore. So two thirds, fold it over. There, so that's the second fold, right? So one more left. Yep, so there. Same thing, third, another third. Give it a little bit of flour and that's it. You've done all the folds. So I wrap it back to that parchment, okay? So back into the freezer, 15 minutes. Okay, so 15 minutes. The dough should be not frozen, but cold. We're gonna roll it out to 10 inches by 15 inches. So the last um, sheet is going to be bigger. Nope, not there yet. Just a tiny bit more on the edges. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a very straight edge on all four edges. I really, really like this dough to be super neat. So you wanna cover half of, half of the um, surface area, okay? So imagine half and then move it to the center, okay? So we're gonna put like, you know, keep the filling inside this imaginary boundary. Apple puree first. And you're just gonna roughly spread it out and make sure that you leave like a good half an inch margin. 
and now the custard. And I'm almost certain that I'm going to have extra custard, okay? Which is fine because I'm just gonna eat it on its own. So egg wash. All four edges. So you fold that side over, give it a little pinch, and then you fold this side over. So you get, it's gonna have like a little um, strip of overlapping, which is going to ensure that it's sealed very nicely. This is the back side. Okay, flip it. A little bit of flour. And I put it on a sheet of parchment lined baking sheet. Gently pinch it down again. And this goes back to um, the fridge for for as long as it takes to preheat my oven. Uh, so top and bottom heat, uh, 220 Celsius. Okay, so the oven is preheated. Um, now go back, you know, this is just right out of the fridge. I'm just gonna make sure that the edges are sealed. And then I'm gonna transfer this to a larger baking sheet. And really simple, just egg wash. If you're unsure about the edges, you can even just pinch it down a little bit. And then I'm going to do little scores because I'm gonna cut the pie like, you know, into four pieces. So I'm kind of going to do my score that way. And the score is to help the steam, you know, to escape. Okay, there. Now into the oven. Little rack. About 35 minutes in. Oof. This should be super golden brown and puffed up. And make sure that you wait um, at least five to 10 minutes before you cut it in. So it's ready to cut when the surface is nice and crispy. Look how flaky that is. And the pie is still warm. The apple puree is just mildly sweet. And the custard brings like a creaminess to the whole party. I've tried this recipe for at least like 10 times and it was like a 10 out of a 10 um, success, success rate. So try it, let me know if you like it and I'll see you next time.